it's just my introduction and we could do it just very and okay they cool. can hear us so all fine so hello uh, i'm barbara Cueto. i'm the curator of co digital and co digital is the digital sibling of CEO Berlin. Uh, CEO Berlin is the institution that we have on the site, uh, usually always dedicated to the lens-based media. And with this new endeavor that we have uh, in CEO Digital, we started thinking about uh, like what is uh, the digital visual cultures and how these connect to the traditions of photography. And of course, this is nothing new, you know, like uh, issues like authenticity or objectivity of representation has always been uh, linked to the, to the photographic discourse, but now of course trickles down to the, to the discourse of uh, uh, in digital in digitality as such. So that's why more or less we're trying to connect, like to trace those dots uh, in uh, CO Digital, we are continue like uh, looking into and thinking through um, exhibiting these same issues that like years ago were much more prevalent in the photographic discourse and now they are coming uh, to the digital. So uh, every year what we do is we have an annual topic, which is this year um, uh, new values. And we have like an incubator program for artists uh, where we commission in your uh, pieces and as well uh, an annual program that this is one of, uh, one of our babies. Uh, and this year we explore the notion of value Special understanding value as a, a much more complex uh, notion that moves away from the, uh, from the market. No, in this case, we think of like what is uh, social innovation, what could be care, uh, what are other these other values that we use in plural, and they normally are not accounted within the traditional, more like patriarchal neoliberal systems. Uh, we use especially and we focus on like how gaming uh, make us rehearse these alternative uh, value systems uh, and like as this potential of like, world building. Um, for is, for these reasons, of course, like we articulate the program uh, like with different time spans and with different methodologies. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is one of the today we're kicking off the this like series of workshops about in-game photography. So we're really happy to to have here Sebastian, and he's actually the person that knows more things. So I'm just gonna let it to him, um, and then we will continue. In this thing. Yeah, so, great. Thanks a lot. So always like this um it never stops being like a university presentation right so it's always just like so i'm handing over to my teammate and and they will continue with the introduction so i'm extremely happy um that we got to make this work that our research that we do into in-game photography and also the teaching that we do with in-game photography so i don't know if um the people on the stream can actually hear this. We have live sound from Berlin. And there was, I guess, uh, it, it sounded like a police car that was just chasing by, so I hope it didn't bother too much. And um, so we're extremely happy that we can um, collaborate with CO Digital on this very topic because we've been working on this uh, for quite a while now. And um, I'll just take the liberty to briefly introduce to the workshop today and also the workshop series that we've actually planned because this is like the first um, introductory um, session that we have. And therefore we also have, uh, and we're extremely lucky to have uh, invited two keynote speakers who will be keynoting the whole workshop series. So you will, um, will be wondering um, where are the other speakers of today, but um, you're the keynotes because this is a whole series. And we know that in, in the age of the digital, we are also in the age of the serial in a way. So this is uh, the way we do it. So I'll, um, go on and uh, show a number of slides and uh, briefly explain. Um, so where I'm from, I'm Sebastian Möhring. I am the head uh, coordinator of the DIGAREC, that's the Digital Games Research Center at the University of Potsdam. And um, where we do many things um, regarding computer games. On the one hand, we are um, uh, publishing books. Um, we've uh, recently published a couple of edited volumes on um, uh, games in educational context, but we also do have like a large computer games collection that you may be able to see um, on the screen now. And we're also involved in a larger project with other institutions um, that's called the International Computer Games Collection, which is going, um, yeah, which is about to be realized. Um, Another thing that I um, have to say and where I'm extremely grateful is that we are supported by the ZEM that's the Brandenburg Center for Media Studies. Um, 
that combines uh, most of the, uh, actually all of the media studies, different media studies departments in all of the state of Brandenburg and uh, does many different things um, concerning media studies. And, but what um, they are actually, what I'm extremely grateful for is uh, that the ZEM has been extremely crucial in supporting uh, research on in-game photography, we have to say. So they have um, uh, supported several international workshops that uh, we have organized. And uh, they've also supported an edited volume on uh, screen images and in-game photography um, that we will publish later this year. And uh, they have also um, um, yeah, generously supported our workshop series. And therefore, um, we have to thank the Zen. So yes, and this is extremely meta because I'm just showing the website of the Zen, which is showing the workshop that we are currently in. And this will happen a, a, a lot of times today. And this is actually what's also the beauty of in-game photography and of screen images, which we will hear of later today as well. So this workshop series, just to briefly uh, give you an idea, we've called it capturing the game world, putting the game in brackets, because maybe games are just part of the world, right? There's this usual um, artificial distinction um, between um, the real and the virtual. Maybe the virtual has become so real that it might as well be real. So, um, and uh, what we are going to do today is like um, the workshop series that we have planned has like four uh, dates, four parts. And today is the more of the theoretical introductory part where we're gonna uh, talk about um, more uh, theoretical issues uh, um, uh, uh, concerning in-game photography, but we also wanted to uh, this workshop series to have practical aspects because um, we actually at the Digarec are also working on in-game photography in a practical and a theoretical way. And we are um, doing the practical things um, precisely to know more about what is this kind of thing that we're dealing with. And therefore we've planned uh, two more hands-on workshops which can be attended in person and can be attended online as well. Um, the next one will be with uh, on October 24 with Debbie Ding and Lars Pinkbird, where we will try to, that's the idea so far, we will inform about this uh, in due time real soon. And um, well, we will, the idea is to actually create virtual worlds and photograph in worlds that have never existed. So that will involve like Blender and maybe also some game engine we will see. In November 17, we will have a workshop with uh, Marco de Mutis from uh, Photo Museum Winterthur, which will not take place in CO Berlin, but in the ZEM in Brandenburg that I've just introduced, where we will go on a walking tour through Grand Theft Auto V or Los Santos, I should probably say for everyone who's initiated. And uh, that's at least what I've, I know so far. And we'll uh, take a look at the sites where famous in-game photographical work has been produced and um, maybe also go there. It will be like also a bring your own device um, workshop thing, but we can also um, work together. We will also have devices there so um, nobody will be left alone. And then we will have an end of the year festival with um, some surprise program so far. So um, maybe this is going to take to um, so we will uh, today we will have uh, two main speakers, uh, Cindy Prember, who I will introduce in a little bit. A little bit later, we will have Winfried Gerling, um, that I will also introduce. I will also introduce the talk, but I'm trying to get get through this introduction real quick, which obviously takes quite a bit long. For those of you who are on the stream, kindly. Um, there is, um, if you are on Twitch directly, you should also be able to comment on Twitch. And if you have any questions, please put them on the Twitch so we can actually respond to them and react to it. Um, just ask whatever questions. Jana uh, is the person on the, on the Twitch stream and will um, let us know about any comments that you have. Also, if the sound is too low or anything, um, or if you can't see anything, let us know there via the comment options. So, okay, I'll have to cut this really short, I believe. The 
there's always a question, what is this kind of thing in-game photography, right? And instead of a definition, I'd rather like uh, to go through a couple of things that just uh, can be subsumed under this like idea. And um, it is up to you probably to decide if that, if you accept this as like some kind of photography or not, or whatever kind this is. So obviously there's like lots of games that have been published or ever more games that are being published are coming by default with a photo mode, which is, um, which seems to be a new like quality of computer games that um, the publishers are um, really keen to use. And uh, therefore, they are actually um, making it available. So what, what's uh, extremely interesting, I don't know if anybody likes uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2, that actually also came with a photo mode. And um, what is extremely interesting of this kind of game is that it actually also comes like with its own social network where you can post your in-game truck photos. And um, what is even more interesting about uh, this kind of uh, subject is that I think it, it, there's like a, a line or like a sort of heritage line maybe to a car photography that has not yet actually been addressed in uh, in-game photography. So maybe this is something that somebody would like to work on. There are games like uh, the mobile smartphone game Snapimals where you can take photos. It's a bit like... Um, um, where you take photos and they are gonna going to be rated, right? So that's that's uh, uh, photography is like a central game mechanic, and then there's like a real artistic work using um, games to actually sometimes recreate famous iconic pictures, like this one from Ken Shealy, who's obviously um, recreating a super famous Robert Kappa image. Or um, there's Claire Henschke, who's using like a technique that's called aver uh, image averaging, and is actually um, uh, yeah using um, Grand Theft Auto V and is uh, using lots of different images, and then is only the only the parts of the image that are present in each of these images are being left in, 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 the, in the final image. And this is what you can see there. So obviously in a third person computer game, you always see like this character because that's always present in most of the images. And it, it's obviously also reminiscent of um, the famous painting. What is it, the Wanderer? Caspar David Friedrich, yes, exactly. The Wanderer Above the Clouds or something? Yes, uh, I think Above the Nebelmeer, but um, that's uh, hard to translate to English. So we can do the same with like, uh, uh, Claire Henschke did this also with the driving games and so on. There's, you can do social photography in computer games like uh, uh, Alan Butler, does in Grand Theft Auto where he's like interested in uh, photographing the homeless, like real NPCs um, that are rarely ever paid attention to and did a whole uh, series about this. And that's, yes. Or Robert Overweg, who is like very famous for showing or for, for photographing like glitches or like the behind the scenes pictures of things of games wor game worlds that are actually not supposed to be seen. But um, there's like a, an appeal to actually look behind. So how does it look from behind? How are like the views that you're not supposed to be had? What is very interesting is that in-game photography is uh, even shown in museums and galleries and in the media these days. So it's actually, it actually has uh, um, yeah, gained some, some attention. So uh, Overweg that I just introduced um, already had a had a show in 2015 in Centre Pompidou in like Paris. Um, but also just very recently, uh, Marco de Mutis and Matteo Bitanti curated a show that's called How to Win at Photography Images as Make, uh, as, uh, Image Making as Play in uh, the Photo Museum Winter Tour that also has just traveled to the Photographer's Gallery in London. I think it just closed or is about to close if I'm not, no, it is about to close. So if you're still, if you're still in London, Sunday, 25th of September is your chance to have a look at this show where 
in-game photog photography plays a part, but it's more about a very general relation between play and photography. So it's not only about video game photography. And um, of course, like um, major news outlets like uh, Le Monde in French, if you read French, feel free to, to read this. There's a, there's a fantastic article about like the art of in-game photography. Um, and I should have probably also shown like the article from Zeit, like a German uh, weekly newspaper from 2012, where Rainer Siegel was writing about in-game photography. And um, so it's a thing. Even Flickr just very, very recently introduced a new category um, that's called virtual photography. So that is very much made also for, for photography that's take, being taken in games. Um, okay, I'll just go ahead. So in like, since uh, it is really hard to define what this kind of thing is in game photography, uh, Marco de Mutis and I uh, once um, settled on like a very, very general definition that I just want to put out here to um, maybe change or adapt, or I don't know. Um, and we believe that it's a multitude of practices and technologies in which photography and video games interact. And it can range from placing a DSLR in front of the unfolding events on the screen, like a real photo camera, or using a video game's photo mode to take a picture, playing a game, where the use of the camera is simulated as a core game mechanic, what I just presented. Um, the Digarec, if you are on, uh, if you're going on the website of the Digarec, digarec.de, there's a real virtual Digarec in-game photo gallery. I've, I used to do seminars with uh, students where we produced in-game photographs uh, to, for different uh, topics. And you can actually uh, walk through this gallery um, there as well and have a look at the different things. Um, I'm just rushing because my time is running out. So that's, uh, yeah, that's just, uh, that's works that uh, you can actually see in the gallery if you go into the Digarec in-game photo gallery. And um, very interesting if you're new to the topic and if you wanna know more about it, um, there are some links like um, game scenes, the famous uh, game art blog is, um, showing a lot of uh, presenting a lot of things about in-game photography the same video game tourism that is actually dot at that is actually run by Rainer Siegel who I uh, just um, mentioned before and then there's a, another blog that's called in-game dot photography that's where um, uh, Marco de Mutis from uh, Photo Museum Winterthur and I actually started to collect everything we could find about in-game photography but uh, in all fairness I have to say that's mainly Marco who's uh, adding stuff uh, to it. But I have uh, yesterday added a list with um, literature on in-game photography, if you're interested. <laughs>